2023. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mr. Franciak, would you please take the roll? Mr. Carter. Mr. Young. Present. Mr. Walters. Here. Ms. Cleveland McGrath. Here. Ms. Moulton. Mr. McDougall. Here. Ms. Hubick. Here. Thank you. Mayor Miller. Mr. Young. Uh, I move we excuse Mr. Carter again. Mr. Carter is still serving the country, and um, sometimes it's difficult to get in. I think it should end soon. Thank you. Second. Okay, a motion by Mr. Young, a second by Ms. Hubick to excuse Mr. Carter. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? A okay, motion carries. Mayor Miller. Mr. Walters. Ms. Moulton sends word that she is traveling and would like to be excused as well. So I move for her uh, absence to be excused. Second. Okay. All right, a motion by Mr. Walters and a second by Ms. Cleveland McGrath to excuse Ms. Moulton. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? A motion carries. All right, uh, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? All right, uh, first up is announcements and committee reports. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements from me. Just a reminder, Skagit County has instituted a burn ban on the 9th of June, that was Friday, and we've always had a burn ban in Anacortes with the exception of, and, and that burn ban is for uh, um, uh, clearing fires and things like that. You can get a permit from the fire department, go online, uh, to the Anacortes website and to receive a burn permit for recreational fires. Uh, also, um, just a heads up, uh, do we, we're doing a lot of water line work, as many of you know, I know council knows, uh, water line replacement program, about 5,000 linear feet of water main from Kingsway to Skyline Way to Anaco Beach Road. However, during this uh, process, uh, while replacing the water main, the Skyline Way the Skyline Way Kingsway intersection discovered a section of the existing 12 inch water main needs replacement. That work will require shutdown of the water main and the water main shutdown will affect the residents of the businesses south of Skyline Way and Kingsway intersection. So that includes Skyline Way and Cabana Lane. That's gonna happen Tuesday, uh, the 20th between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. But uh, please check for updates if you're in that area uh, at anacortiswa.gov or a Facebook, uh, Anacortes Public Works Facebook page. Uh, I put on uh, council uh, the, this little uh, brochure, but I wanted to make another plug for C-Click Fix. Uh, we've had this uh, instituted at the city for since April, and it uh, seems to be working really well. There's an opportunity for folks to, first of all, what is it? It's, uh, what, what does this app do? Uh, it's from, you can uh, um, pass on to the city missing street signs, potholes, down trees, uh, using the C-Click Fix apps. So you can send pictures, uh, locations, specific descriptions, and more. And this information will go right to our city crews to get the job done efficiently. So it's a widely used app by many municipalities and uh, empowers residents to report issues, identify repair needs, share feedback, and ask questions of their local government. And the idea is a citizen's first approach, requesting services and report issues through C Click Fix. That's what the app looks like. It's a, a black square with a white heart and a wrench in it. And easy to download, I can even use it. Uh, and then uh, thanks in advance to Mr. Young. He's going to chair next week's meeting, uh, be in at the Association of Washington City's annual conference uh, next week. All right, uh, so other uh, Housing Affordability and Community Services Committee report. Ms. Cleveland McGrath. Sure, so we had our HACS meeting June 7th. Um, we had just a brief kind of agenda, but we're also, we've got new staff members and a new director, so we're kind of getting back into the swing of things and doing some updates. So we talked a little bit about the Habitat for Humanity lease that we're working on. Um, just kind of emphasizing the importance of permanent affordability, local preference, and then how do we 
kind of as if for some reason the the property, if and when it sells, how do we how do we resell to someone to a, a nec the next property owner who would qualify for the area median income requirements? Um, so we're going to do a little bit more research about that. Um, we talked, Steve Simmons from Community Action, we were talking about kind of um, some of the challenges of, of how do we have, deal with our outreach strategy, and he suggested we kind of go with a policy group and then an operators group. Policy group would be kind of the safety guideline, guardrails and goals for how we, how we handle our outreach, and then an operators group would be more of the specific agencies that can talk about cases um, to avoid duplication of services, to unify messaging and intent, and to kind of have an organized approach. So I think that I thought that was a really good, simple way of starting to work on those. So I think we will continue to discuss how we set it up in that manner. Um, June 14th at 9 a.m. At, at the Burlington Library, they will have a, there's gonna be a Skagit Homeless Service Provider Discussion Group. Um, I plan to go, and I think maybe a couple other folks um, from our committee will attend. And then we started talking a little bit about um, the 2023 legislative summary. We didn't get too far, so we're going to keep talking about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up is uh, Planning Committee. Mr. Walters. The Planning Committee met just before this meeting, and uh, we started that discussion with um, a list of potential code amendments to address housing options in Anacortes. Uh, as you may all remember, we adopted a housing action plan at the beginning of this year. Uh, in the adopting uh, resolution for that plan, we did note that not all the things in the plan have been vetted and discussed by City Council, but it's a great menu of options. And so what we would like to do is move in the near term forward with an ordinance that would adopt some of the low hanging fruit, the most obvious changes that would provide for more housing options in Anacortes. Things like uh, changing uh, conditional uses to permitted uses in our zoning matrix. Um, so we had quite a bit of discussion about what aspects of which uh, uh, options might get included in such an ordinance. And I would say that was almost the entirety of our discussion. Um, the big constraint here being that the planning department has a new director and four other new staff, so it's, it may be a while before this comes forward, but most of the, of the work is not required by statute to be done until six months after our comp plan update in 2025, and we would like to get it done before then because the housing need is great and the housing need is right now. So more to come on you know where that fits into the department's work plan and that kind of thing, but uh, we're also going to spend some additional time fleshing out, you know, which of those proposals would make it into that. Uh, the other primary topic of our meeting was uh, parklets and sidewalk restaurant uses um, and what that looks like going forward. And we really just started to scratch the surface of that. Uh, so there's much more discussion to be had before we have any kind of conclusion or recommendation. But um, definitely something that we need, want to move forward on, again, in the near term because parklets are out there now and um, they need to have a little bit of regulation uh, before we um, get too far along with, with nothing. That's all I got for that. Okay, uh, Public Safety Committee. Ms. Hubick. Thank you. Public safety, um, we got a presentation on the partnership, um, kind of a, a reiteration of the things that were talked about at last council meeting about the um, work that Ashley's been doing. There's also been an indication that North Sound um, ACH is another partnership that's been added to the outreach effort um, for folks in our area. They are... Um, the fire department is applying for the AWC, the Association of Washington Cities grant. So it's the same grant that's been funding um, us for the last six months. And so we should hear something, I think, by the end of this month on whether or not that grant came through. Um, fire department is still recruiting for more entry-level paramedics, EMTs, and lateral hires. And then on the police side, um, also gave 
a hiring update. So there are lateral employees that are coming through to entry level officers are being registered for the academy. So um, if we're looking at what we had been down this fiscal year, this calendar year, um, we needed about five new police staffers and we're at filling five of those five um, when, it, when we get one last hire, so we're four or five, and then there's the moving on to the positions that are being funded by the levy. We won't get money from that levy um, until 2024, and we're only up against one retirement in the next year or so. Um, one of the more exciting things was some of the good news that was coming out of the state legislative budget. There um, has been a new basic law enforcement academy that's been positioned to happen in Skagit. And so um, our police chief was actually down there when we had our public safety meeting and it sounds like they are all working really, really hard to make a November academy happen, which would be absolutely fantastic. Um, it sounds like everyone that attends is gonna be someone that lives within 50 miles, so there will be no overnight accommodations. This is absolutely fantastic for people that may have been putting off getting into the academy because they can't spend weeks and nights away from their family or their home. And uh, yeah, lots of good news. Thanks. Uh, next up is Port City Liaison Committee. Ms. Hubick. I'll do that one too. Okay. Um, Port City meeting met um, June 6th, same as our public safety meeting. Um, it was a pretty quick um, around the table discussion of a lot of more good things that are happening. There is work on getting a Q Avenue pedestrian crossing put up, so making things a lot safer for very, very busy intersections. Um, Sounds like that funding is going to come through and we should see it, I think, before the end of the year. We are still doing a lot of work on an interlocal between the port and the city, so making sure that um, when work is being done in one area, if somebody over here on 2nd Street is doing work on behalf of the port, that the city can partner up to save a little bit of time um, and resources. They are, the port is going to be um, working on their RV parking lot project over the summer. So it'll be pretty loud, groundbreaking um, on that project will probably happen in early July. There will be curb work and streets tree work. So just be aware of the noise and watch out for street closures or um, redirections down to one lane, especially if you're headed over to the farmer's market. We had a nice uh, waterfront festival this past weekend and a good waterfront festival celebration in the port um, building itself. We had some more updates from the city around the outfall project. Um, the port is also receiving some concerns about noise complaints at the marine terminals. City has also received a couple of other um, various noise complaints. So just remember that we do have a noise ordinance that is based on all of the statute that is written within the law, within the RCW. Um, most of the time it is meant for situational noises, so like a party that's getting too loud at 2 a.m. or a construction noise that's happening at 6 a.m. and going until way past dark. Um, those are things that can be enforced through um, city ordinance, not necessarily somebody driving by with a really um, loud truck. And then um, we also touched on one of the things that'll be touched on probably in upcoming uh, economic committee meetings is finding um, alternates for the transit shed down at the port. Thanks, and just a little clarification, that Q Avenue crossing, that was a request by the port and a number of citizens, and uh, our, our staff went out and uh, found some grant funding, and we're pretty excited about uh, improving that uh, crossing between Safeway and Anthony's. So, uh, and then the RV park, just to touch on that, that it's actually going to be closed while they do construction. <laughs> so if you had plans to, or your friends visiting from out of town had plans, it's not gonna be open. Okay, uh, next, uh, any other, uh, we're gonna do, there's a presentation from Reese Across America and you can go ahead and uh, start getting yourself set up, but are there any other uh, committee reports that uh, missed? Okay, Reese Across America. Uh, I will let you go ahead and introduce yourself to the council, name and uh, where you live, and we only require the city that you live in. 
and make sure the blue light or green light is on. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council workers, sorry, members. Um, my name is Sue Falstead, and I am here representing Reese Across America, along with my husband, Gary, who is co-chair. And we're also, we have Ms. Darcy Storm, who is, <clears throat> excuse me, the head of the auxiliary of the American Legion Post 13 here in Anacortes. They are the ones that are sponsoring this program for Anacortes. For years, the Worcester family back east gave Reese away like it was going out of style. He was very patriotic, and they did ceremonial race. They did Reese all over, didn't charge a dime, and it got to the point where they realized this is not going to work forever. In 2005, a photo was, um, somebody took a photo of Arlington, and it's on the back of your flyer, or I'm sorry, your brochures that you've got. Okay, that'll work too. Um, it shows the brilliant green leaves or greenery, the cherry red bows sitting against a headstone that's white and covered with snow. This picture went iconic. It did. Somebody took it and it went from there. And at that point, they decided we have to do a nonprofit. So they formed a 5013C to help with the finances. And it is that way still today. Primarily, the organization is all volunteers, everything from location coordinators to people who lay wreaths on the ground to the truck drivers to everyone. It's an incredible organization. I can't say enough about it. There's also many educational components that go with this. They believe in teaching the youth to remember, honor, and, and serve. They have actual um, classroom guides that you can pull in for kindergartners on up and teach them about veterans and serving and that kind of thing. So there's a huge educational component that goes on along with this. This year, we signed up both Fern Hill and Grandview to, to um, participate in this program. The ceremony will be done at Fern Hill because they have a reception area, they have plenty of parking, they have bathrooms, which are important, and Grandview doesn't have it, but they're still going to get ceremonial wreaths, and we will put wreaths on the graves of veterans as well. So this ceremony will be on Saturday, the 16th of December. It will start at 10 o'clock in the morning. We will have a, a short ceremony, followed by the wreath laying, and then there will be a reception afterwards. And anybody who would like to then follow us over to Grandview, we're going to do the same thing over there. So, why am I here? <laughs> you know I want something. Obviously, Wreaths are $17 a piece. Obviously, we would like people to buy wreaths, but from the city, it's more than that. We would like you to get behind this program. Talk it up. Talk to your relatives, your neighbors, your friends. Do anything that you can to push it, because I'd, I think that this could be a city-wide program if, if it's done right. And it doesn't take a lot of effort. It doesn't take a lot of effort at all. So, I've given you brochures. I have more. If you need them, you can contact me. I think there's some down in Park and Rec already. And if you have any questions, I'm open. Okay. Any uh, questions? All right. You got well, anything to say? Gary, you, oh, okay. Uh, Ms. Cleveland. Yeah, Could I, I add one thing? Uh, go, ahead. go ahead, Gary. Um, there's about a thousand graves between the two cemeteries. Uh, we would like to cover all of them with wreaths, but it depends on the donations from people here in Anacortes. Uh, and uh, if we get enough, we're looking, we've already raised a couple thousand dollars. We're going to need about 12 to 13,000 to do all the graves. 
Uh, hopefully we can do that between now and December. So uh, any support the city could give uh, to support this, um, we, we would very much appreciate it. So a thousand veteran grave sites between Fern Hill and uh, Grandview. Correct. Ms. Cleveland. Oh, wow. <laughs> Way to anticipate that question. I forgot to mention that come August, we're going to put these in storefronts up and down Commercial Avenue. There's a QR code here. All they have to do is take a picture. They can donate and all that kind of thing. Okay. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. It. All right. Uh, next up on announcements and committee reports, we have Police Department Accreditation Award. We are going to hear from our police chief. And you can guess what the subject is. Chief Floyd. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council, and those in attendance tonight. I'm here to uh, share with you the recent accreditation recognition received by the Anacortes Police Department. Uh, our accreditation cycle, which we were just uh, went through the evaluation process for, is for 2019 through 2022. And this effort uh, for the accreditation cycle was led by Captain Chad Pruitt with assistance from numerous other APD staff members uh, I give 100% of the credit for this accreditation award to those individuals. They worked very hard. The accrediting body for this is the Washington State Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs. And the Intercourse Police Department was evaluated in 143 standards, uh, including but not limited to administrative and operational effectiveness, fair recruiting and employment practices, secure records management, proper use of technology, ethical codes of conduct by staff, and ethical treatment of victims, witnesses, and suspects. The evaluation was based on agency policies being in line with industry best practices and the adherence by our agency uh, to those policies. The accreditation proce uh, process uh, leads law enforcement agencies operating with a healthy internal and external culture. That positive agency culture leads to the recruitment and retention of quality candidates for our officer positions. Uh, beginning in 2024, many of the grant programs administered by the Department of Justice are going to require that recipients be accredited before they're eligible to receive grant funding. And I think it's noteworthy that out of the 240 municipal agencies and 39 county law enforcement agencies across the state, uh, as of today's count, there are only 68 accredited agencies there are substantially fewer agencies that have been able to maintain this accredited status for multiple cycles as we have. And I would think there's very few that have been able to do it as long or longer than the Anacortes Police Department. Uh, being an accredited agency since 2007 means that the Anacortes Police Department has continually maintained the highest level of professional standards for law enforcement. And uh, Captain Pruitt and I went to the uh, conference in Spokane to to accept this award on behalf of the police department. So I just thought it was noteworthy to come and share with you. Great, uh, any, well, the first comment I have is uh, one of the things that I think you told me about the accreditation, uh, that it's not just about having good policy, but that your folks are following that, that policy. And I think uh, it's a credit to your team and uh, to all the work that, that's done to make it to make you know one of the, the best the best uh, police agency in the state of Washington. So, uh, Mr. Walters, thank you. Uh, congratulations, Chief. I understand that uh, accreditation was started by Police Chief Bonnie Bowers way back when. I'm very pleased that it has continued through now three police chiefs. Um, I wish there were someone here to present the award to you rather than <laughs> you reporting on it, but. Uh, either way, it, it's, uh, it's an accomplishment, but it's also so valuable for us, for you, to have a third party look at what you do and give you the kudos, but also make sure that you are crossing your T's and dotting your I's. It's, it's really valuable for us to know that that is being done, 
because it is also very consistent with what we hear in the community about APD. So um, congratulations and, and thank you for continuing to do all the work that is required to continue the accreditation. Mayor Miller. Mr. Young. <clears throat> Without piling on too much, keeping you hungry, <laughs> you know, just really want to uh, you know, thank you uh, for service, you know, because really, you know, um, even though it's, it's a position, but it's still a public service that you do, and it affects all of us. And the thing that I really appreciate personally about uh, the work and the work that's happening within the police department is that they have always been open to discussions, open to consideration, and open to learning how we can even be better. And given the standards that we're already seeing, you know, I just really want to applaud the effort that you're putting forward as our police chief and the men and women that serve um, the city of Anacortes. So thank you. I appreciate that very much. And again, uh, you know, I, I get the privilege of, of just sharing this with you tonight, but uh, I'd like to give all the credit to Captain Pruitt and his team that supported him throughout this. They did all the heavy lifting for this project. So thank you. So since you did have to drag the award back uh, across the mountains um, and we don't have somebody to present it to, if council, if you don't mind, maybe Ms. Shu could probably take a picture. If council can go in front, we'll take a picture with him. Are you good with that? Okay, let's do it. Okay, any other announcements and committee reports before I move on to item number four? All right, on to item number four, which is public comment. This is an opportunity for any members of the public that would like to address the council on anything that's uh, not on our agenda tonight. And looking on line, a couple attendees that might be waiting to address the uh, other business, and nobody has signed up. So I will move on to our consent agenda, item 5A, B, C, and D. Council. Mayor Miller. Ms. Hubick. I move to approve consent agenda items A through D. Second. Okay, a motion by Ms. Hubick, a second by Mr. Young to approve consent agenda items A through D. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, I think uh, Mr. Hash, you're free to go. <laughs> uh, just, you know, gotta be ready in case you got some questions about the mower. Uh, we are on to item number six, uh, other business. Uh, first up is item 6A. Ordinance 4051, this is a Title IX update. Uh, this is discussion with possible action. And this is open for public comment. And Ms. Swetnam will bring up her PowerPoint presentation, that one that we may have seen before, but uh, for uh, allow us to have a discussion. Nice, nice, nicely done giving me time to get it up. <laughs> no, I had to drag that out. Okay, Ms. Swetnam. Thank you, Mayor Miller, members of council, and members of the audience. So tonight is a second read of draft uh, ordinance 4051. Um, this is an updated PowerPoint presentation, and the ordinance draft that's in your packet is drastically different than the one that was presented at the first read. And we'll, we'll talk about why and how that's different. So just to recap, uh, the, there's a need for an update uh, because there has been some uncertainty and change in response to the State versus Blake case that invalidated Washington State's strict liability drug possession laws. Um, there was an interim ordinance that was adopted 
that allowed for um, a misdemeanor charges to be brought against someone who knowingly possessed controlled substances, provided that there were a certain number of referrals to, uh, to social services. Um, so since the first read of Ordinance 4051, Senate Bill 5536 was signed on May 16th, um, the day after we presented the first read of the ordinance that addressed uh, use and possession of drugs. Call, call, or, or people are calling it the Blake fix. Uh, so the legislative update, it occupies and preempts the field of drug paraphernalia. And uh, the state occupies and preempts the field of setting penalties for violations of the Controlled Substances Act. So the adoption of State Bill 50, or Senate Bill 5536 invalidated portions of the previous ordinance 4045 that council adopted uh, just not too many months ago. So the updated version of the ordinance that's in the packet, um, first of all, it, uh, in response to the, the uh, changes that were adopted on the state level, it removed those sections that would create those violations in the Anacortes Municipal Code. Uh, specifically regarding possession of controlled substances, those penalties, and there was language in the previous draft that talked about the use of therapeutic courts. Um, so instead, uh, what this draft proposes to do is to adopt by reference the RCW sections that were adopted in Senate Bill 5536. And I just want to mention that Ordinance 4045 did adopt some of these sections by reference already, as, as they may be amended and updated. So, um, so some of that did not need to be changed to reflect these changes. Uh, but the, but the, the takeaway from Senate Bill 5536 is that it makes knowing possession of prohibited substances, uh, which, which includes controlled substances and counterfeit substances, is, a, is now gross misdemeanor. Knowing use of those prohibited substances in public places is also a gross misdemeanor. Um, knowing possession or public use of legend drugs, which are prescription drugs, is now a misdemeanor along with possession of an ounce or more of marijuana or the possession of any amount of marijuana by somebody under the age of 21. Those are all misdemeanors now, as well as uh, possession of paraphernalia. So the other thing that this updated ordinance does is it repeals those sections of Ordinance 4045 that are now preempted by the state law. So Section 922020 of the, of the Anacortes Municipal Code address possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, Section 922030 uh, addressed use of a controlled substance in a public place and Section 922040 addressed unlawful deposit of controlled substances and drug paraphernalia. So this ordinance repeals those, incorporates the new state laws by reference, um, I'm, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Staff is recommending approval. Okay, uh, before I have council ask questions, any member of the public wanna comment on this, these changes? I know our timing was maybe a little bit uh, off, but we wanted to make sure to, as we had this first read the same day, the I think the same day the or the day before the special session went into effect, but we're trying to be prepared. So any member of the public uh, want to comment? All right, council, questions for Ms. Swetnam? Comments? Mr. Walters? Mayor Miller. Uh, I think this is all very straightforward. We have already accomplished incorporation of most of the state law. State changed these couple. We come in and we incorporate these by reference. Um, I guess I only have a couple of questions. First of all, there are a number of documents attached to the agenda item in the packet, and I believe you are proposing adoption of the first one. But how are we very clear in our motion to adopt this that that's the document that we are adopting as attachment A. Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, so I did include the old packet material from last month's meeting, and so that included the former draft. Uh, the draft that is on top in the packet is the one staff is recommending approval, and if you would like to clarify 
that it is the first draft that occurs in the packet, then I, th I think that accomplishes, if you're comfortable okay. with that. Okay. Otherwise, we're happy to bring it back on the consent agenda as a standalone with all the changes incorporated if council's more comfortable with that. I, I wouldn't propose that we, you know, drag it out any further. Uh, I think that adopting it now is fine. It's very straightforward. Uh, I do have one question, that is, have we, um, have we charged anyone under the public use of drugs that we are now repealing? So That's a great question, and I think Chief Floyd, Chief Floyd is, here. is here. No, and he's shaking his head no, but he's, he gets to come up to the microphone and say that because I know somebody who's asked that question before. <laughs> there has not been anyone uh, charged that would be pending for court cases. And so. I assume not also the um, unlawful deposit of controlled, the littering of controlled substances. We haven't charged anybody under that? Not yet. Okay. That's all I have. I think that I had that same question. We were interested to see how the court, uh, if if that went to court, how the court might handle that, considering the preemption. So, I, we there's still a potential it could happen, but uh, since we're this this will go into effect one July, correct? Correct. All That's right. correct. Which Counts. is which is the same date that the state law goes into effect as well. Any other questions, Council? Mayor Miller. Mr. Walters. I move approval of ordinance number 4051, specifically the first draft that's in the packet. Second. Okay, a motion by Mr. Walters, a second by Ms. Hubick to adopt ordinance 4051, uh, the first draft in the packet. Mr. Franciak, would you take the vote, please? Mr. Young. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. Ms. Cleveland McGrath. Yes. Mr. McDougall. Yes. Ms. Hubick. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, next up is item 6B. That's resolution 3021, update to personnel policies. Ms. Wynn. And you already have it just about open. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and members of the audience. Uh, tonight, I'd like to present to you regarding our 2023 personnel policy updates. As a bit of background, our personnel policies, or what other people might refer to as an employee handbook, uh, apply to all of our city employees, um, unless the topic is already covered in a collective bargaining agreement or civil service rules. These policies were last updated on August of 2021, and while there haven't been any substantial legal updates, they were due for a general update. Uh, just as an overview, I'll go over our review process. So we started off with an internal human resources review where I made some suggested changes and added suggested changes that I had collected since the last review had occurred. After this, we sent the document for a legal review by one of our employment attorneys. Following that, I opened the full red line of the changes to our city staff for comment. That was for two weeks, and the following week, I opened it for comment uh, for our union representatives. Uh, both of these comment periods did not produce any substantial concerns or comments, just mostly small edits and things like that. Uh, finally, on June 5th, we uh, reviewed the personnel policy changes with our personnel committee, and um, I am wrapping up today by bringing it to council. Uh, included in the council packet is a summary document where I go over some of the major changes as well as a full red line of every single edit made to the personnel policies. But I'll go over just some, some highlights. This is not a, an all-inclusive list by any means. So obviously we've done some formatting updates and, and just general changes to the document. We've also added a diversity, equity, and inclusion section under our code of conduct. We've adjusted our promotional probation period to be six months. This used to be one year long. And this is just more consistent with our Teamsters Bargaining Unit promotional probationary period. We've adjusted our dual insurance incentive policy to include spouses and dependents who are on TRICARE. 
We have also um, included a couple standalone policies, our emergency operations policy, as well as our IS and IT policies. This will allow for us to regularly update, and it's just an ease of access item as well to have them all in one document. So with that, I am recommending that the Anacortes City Council adopt Resolution 3120, passing and approving our personnel policies and superseding Resolution 3049. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, thank you very much. And I know uh, the Personnel Committee uh, took a look at this, and I know everybody else memorized all 370 pages of it. So, any questions, comments? Mr. Young. First of all, thank you for the hard work. I know um, you know there was a lot that went into it, the depth of um, discussion, the depth of thought to make sure um, that our best foot was put forward and represents the face of our city and what we're trying to do. Um, you know, and as part of the committee, it was an honor uh, to work with you on getting this done. I'm very much in supportive uh, support of it. I think that uh, the steps that have become very clear are uh, tweaks that needed to be done, but as in any organization, any group, um, you know, it's always a fluid process as thoughts, ideas, addresses um, tend to evolve, and it's just sometimes playing a bit of catch up. So, you know, thank you for that, and, um, you know, with that, uh, unless there's any other comment that anyone wants to make, I make a motion to approve Resolution 3021, Adopting Updated City uh, Personnel Policies. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Young, a second by Ms. Cleland McGrath to update uh, or, uh, or approve Resolution 3021, Adopting Updated City, updated city Personnel Policies. Any additional discussion? Mayor Miller. Mr. Walters. The IT policies that are in the exhibit at the end are just presented 100% in red line, so can't see any differences from what we have had before. But also, mm -hmm. we didn't really have them before as part of the personnel policies. Mm -hmm. Can you summarize any substantive changes from how we've been operating? Yeah, uh, uh, HR worked collaboratively with Ms. Shu and the IT department to take what we had three policies, our computer policies, internet policy, and um, I think a personal device policy as well, um, to put them into one document and then to make general updates, um, technological updates, uh, removing outdated terms from the policy. There are no major substantive policies that I can report on today that would, that would affect um, our regular business. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, still a motion by Mr. Young, a second by Ms. Cleland McGrath uh, for approval of Resolution 3021. Mr. Francia, I could take the vote, please. Mr. Walters. Yes. Ms. Cleland McGrath. Yes. Mr. McDougall. Yes. Ms. Hubick. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, there be no further business uh, before the City Council. I will adjourn the Council meeting of 12 June. Thank you.